time in Goss's Garage, we're going to revisit batteries. It's cold, it's that time of the year when a lot of batteries are failing. Now, the one thing that most people seem to think is that the cold is what damages the battery. Well, that's wrong. What damages the battery is the high temperatures in the summer. Well, then the damage is done when the cold comes around a cold engine is much harder to crank. It takes more electrical energy out of the battery to crank a cold engine. The battery has been damaged, it has been weakened, and that extra requirement for power pushes it over the edge. So it didn't really get damaged in the winter, it got damaged last summer. All right, four years, that's about the most you can really hope for as far as having a reliable car that's going to start and so on. So if your battery is four years old or older, well, you're on borrowed time and you should start shopping for an, a replacement battery. Now, how do you do this? How do you do it intelligently? See, if you open the newspaper, you'll find all of these uh, advertisements for batteries or go online and everybody has the best battery. Now you stop and think about it. How can every last one of them be the best? There's only one that's the best. Not all of them, but yet they all want you to believe that their product is the best. Reality is, most of them are probably going to be good, as long as it's a name brand. So, you start looking at the different batteries. Now, there's all different kinds of warranties out there. Uh, we have one here. We look at this super duper high power battery. Now what in the world does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. It's a Madison Avenue term. And of course we exaggerated it here because we look at these uh, claims about batteries and some of them are high performance and high power and high this and high something else. Well, none of this stuff really means anything because there is no industry standard for them. So what do you do? Well, there are some basics that you look for. Number one, CCA, cold cranking amps. All right, cold cranking amps tells you the battery's ability to start your car. The more cold cranking amps, the stronger the battery is, the more power it can produce to start the car. And what you want to look for is the most cold cranking amps that will physically fit in your car. See, the external configuration of the battery doesn't necessarily determine the cold cranking amp rating of the battery. In other words, this smaller battery over here might have more cold cranking amps than this bigger one here. So you can't just look at the, uh, the dimensions of it. You see, you have to have the proper dimension for your car, and then within that proper dimension, you buy the most cold cranking amps that you can, uh, can get for your car. All right, now the next thing is reserve capacity, RC. Reserve capacity is telling you how long the battery can sustain a minimal load without going dead. Now this is important because modern cars have all kinds of computer systems on them. They have things in the evaporative emission control system and all sorts of things and all of these memories and all of these different things that go on in a car even though it's turned off and it's just sitting still, well they consume power from the battery and the more reserve capacity that you have the better it'll be the longer that car can sit before the battery goes dead and won't start the car. So those are the two primary things. You want the most cold cranking amps and reserve capacity that you can get. Now, we mentioned this warranty here, all these uh, exotic warranties, lifetime warranties, and uh, warranty for life and a half and oh heaven only knows it's all Madison Avenue garbage anyway. What do you look for? Well the one thing that really counts is the number of months of free replacement. 
free replacement. That's the key. Not the number of months of replacement, because once the free replacement period is gone, then you pay a prorated amount for each month of service that you got out of that battery. And the more expensive the battery, well, the more you pay per month. So it's kind of hard to win on that deal. All right. And the other thing to remember with that is that you pay the pro rating on the current list price of the battery, not a sale price, not what you paid for it or anything like that, but the current list price of the battery in most cases. So, like I say, kind of hard to win on that one. So you're looking for the longest period of time where your battery will be replaced free. And that might be six months, it might be a year, it might be 18 months, whatever it is, you're looking for the longest period because that's where it'll really be meaningful. All right, now a couple of other things. We have here a GM side terminal battery. Unlike this one, we'll turn it around. This particular battery, this is a top terminal battery. You have cables that attach to the posts of the battery and they slide down over the posts. That's a conventional type. Now over here is the side terminal battery used exclusively in General Motors cars. Now one would think that because of the way those are constructed that there would never be a problem, but the reality of it is that these batteries give a lot of problems as far as the cable connections are concerned. And a major portion of that is because of the bolts that hold the cables to the terminals in the battery. These things get, well, it's, it's almost like corrosion, but they, the metal actually changes and they don't look bad. But we get tons of General Motors cars that come in that intermittently won't start. It's just click, click, do it three or four times and it starts. Well, we find that probably 80% of the time we put two new battery bolts, high quality ones, we put two new ones in, problem gone. So don't overlook that on a General Motors. Now the other thing is, if you're really good about maintaining your batteries, if you have a top terminal battery, after a while, the cleaning process, which uses a, a wire brush that goes over the, the post and it scrubs away all of the oxidation on the top of, or on the sides of the battery post. Well, in that case, after several cleanings, the post actually gets smaller. Now you can't tighten up the cable and get a good connection. Well, here you can buy these. These are little caps that go over the post so that it renews the size of the battery post and you can get a good connection. So those are some of the basics as far as batteries go. But one thing to keep in mind is that you got all these old wives tales about using uh, soda to clean the battery posts and all such things as that. Or you can take uh, baking soda and put on it and uh, you know, what are you going to do? Well, what you're going to do is you're going to clean the outside of this and it may look great to you, but the actual place that needs to be cleaned is the inside of the cable that goes over this and the outside of this post. You can't do that by pouring something over the outside of it. It has to be disconnected. Not something that I'd recommend in most situations, unless you really know what you're doing. So pouring stuff on the battery, well, makes it look good for you. But one thing to remember, electricity does not have eyes and it can't appreciate the same things that you appreciate. So, may look wonderful to you, as far as electricity is concerned, well, doesn't work. Oh, also, don't take Vaseline, you know, petroleum jelly, uh, grease or anything like that and put it on a battery cable connection. Yeah, it'll keep the corrosion down, but grease, Vaseline and so on, that, those are all insulators. And on a hot summer day, this stuff melts and it migrates down between the, uh, the post and the cable 
and now you have an insulator between the, where we have to uh, transfer electrical energy from one part to another. And what have you done? You have insulated the circuit, but again, it looks great to you. Electrically, it doesn't work. So only use proper battery terminal coatings, which don't do this. And finally, if you have a late model car and you buy a new battery, don't be surprised if there's a charge on your bill for reprogramming your car's computer. You see, modern computers on cars have become very sophisticated and battery charging is typically controlled by the car's computer. It controls the alternator to recharge the battery. And these systems are smart enough to know that things are different inside a four-year-old battery than they are in a four-day-old battery. So there's an algorithm inside the computer that gradually changes the way the alternator charges the battery. Well, you put a new one in, you take your four-year-old battery out, put a brand new one in, and you don't reprogram the computer. Well, it's stuck on charging a four-year-old battery, and it overcharges your new battery, and the life of the battery is shortened. Or, in some cases, you damage the electrical or electronic parts on your car. So, just some things to be aware of. And if you have a question or a comment, drop me a line at radio at goss-garage.com.